All right, my friends, should you get the Revel F328BE or the old Salon 2? That's the question we're going to be asking in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasalo with Audioholics. We are at the new Audioholics Smart House. We're in the house. We got the Revel F328BEs. This is their Performer Beryllium series. It's their current flagship in that series. And the question has come up many times on our forums, even my own curiosity. I'm wondering which one is the better Revel speaker? Is it the F328BE? or is it the old Salon 2s? Well, I have some thoughts on that, but I also asked Jim Garrett from Harmon about that. He's the product development manager. We're gonna be hearing from him later, but let me give you my thoughts right now. So looking just at the specs between the Performer 328BEs versus the Salon 2s, the couple of advantages that these speakers have is number one, they're 13 years newer. They just came out recently. The Salon 2s are 13-year-old technology. Not that that's bad technology. It's just that Harman's had 13 years to refine the secret ingredients of their speakers. So the Performa F328BEs, they have about a 5 dB more sensitivity rating. So they're rated at 91 dB with 2.83 volts at 1 meter versus the Salon 2s, which are rated a little bit above 86 dB for 2.8 three volts for one meter. What that means is the Revel F328s will play louder for a given amount of power than the Salon 2s. So it's a little harder to drive the Salon 2s than this speaker. In fact, it, it's probably more than a little harder. It's not just the sensitivity rating. The impedance rating is lower on the Salon 2. They rate that speaker a nominal six ohms. And even if they go to the IEC standard to meet that requirement of six ohms, that means that impedance of that speaker drops below four ohms at certain frequencies. That's a harder load for a lot of amplifiers to drive. This speaker on the other hand, the F328 is rated at eight ohms. Now, I'm kind of wondering if we've got three triple eights in there, I'm wondering if the impedance dips in the four ohm range. I'm gonna be measuring this. I'm gonna be doing a formal review of the speaker. I'm gonna measure the impedance just to see but generally speaking, this has a little bit of a higher impedance than the Salon 2. It's a more efficient speaker. It's easier to drive. That's the bottom line. And that's one of the goals that Revel was trying to do with the speaker. They wanted a speaker that was able to be driven basically with a receiver amplifier all the way up to a Mark Levinson amplifier, whatever your budget goes for. So the other differences is this speaker, the F328BE, has their latest lens and their latest waveguide technology. In fact, this is a sixth generation waveguide. This is their latest geometry here. The benefit of the waveguide, of course, is to match the directivity from the tweeter to the mid-range, so the dispersion characteristics are fluid and continuous right at the crossover frequency. It gives you better spins in their measurements. You could see the measurements on this speaker. The, the, the speaker measures beautifully. If you look at the directivity index, all the geeky stuff that we always talk about on this channel, this is kind of a benchmark speaker. This is why I wanted this speaker up here in my music room. I wanted this as a reference. So the advantage of this speaker over the Salon 2 is the Salon 2 has like a second generation waveguide. No way near as advanced as this one. The geometry of this one's more advanced. This also has an acoustic lens on the tweeter, which helps smooth out the high, very high frequency response. So the tweeter technology in here, even though both speakers have the beryllium tweeter, the way this tweeter loads into the room is more advanced than the Salon 2. Now the other differences are, these have the ceramic coated aluminum drivers, the mids and the woofers, whereas the Salon 2s have the titanium woofers. So this just has a different kind of cone material. It's a very damped material with their ceramic composite material that they impregnate over the aluminum. Basically, all of these drivers, when they operate within their bandwidth, there's no breakup within their bandwidth. And when they, the breakup modes are much higher than the bandwidth that they're actually being worked at. So you, what you get is a very linear speaker, free from resonances. Upon my listening test initially in this room, which is not an ideal room, I noticed I didn't hear any kind of resonances that you might hear in some speakers. These things are just very clean. But now I'll tell you some of the advantages of the Salon 2. And this is not something you're going to see too much online. If you look very closely at the specs, 
they show you the minus 6 dB point of the speaker as their default spec, whereas the Salon 2 shows you the minus 3 dB point or the minus 1.5 dB point. The tighter tolerance specs on the Salon 2 versus this. And part of the reason is they chose to make this speaker a high efficient speaker. And as a result of making it a higher sensitivity speaker, more, you know, play louder for, for the same amount of power, they sacrifice some bass performance. So if you look at the 3 dB point on this speaker, it's about 12 hertz higher than the Salon 2. It's about 35 hertz the 3 dB point versus the Salon 2 is about 23 hertz. So what that means is the Salon 2 has deeper bass extension. Now the only reason that would be important is if you're setting up a two channel system and you're not gonna use a powered sub and you want a full range speaker, this is not truly a full range speaker like the Salon 2 is. The Salon 2 will dig down in the low 20s with authority, whereas this speaker kind of at 25 hertz, it's at its minus 6 dB point, and then it just drops off a cliff below that. I've measured that in this room. There's just not a lot of ultra low frequency bass response in this speaker. I would imagine that um, Harman probably figured that this would be used in a high upscale home theater with powered subs, and they wanted a speaker that had high sensitivity, one that had high dynamic range, having, thrip, uh, having three eight inch woofers like that gives you tons of output above 60 Hertz. So it makes it really easy to blend this speaker with powered subs, high output subs. You can go and put really big subwoofers in a system with this speaker. This speaker won't be your limiting factor. This thing has tons of output, it's very clean. So without me talking further, why don't we listen to Jim Garrett, the product development manager of Harman, he has both the Salon 2 and the Revel F328BEs in his own place. He gives us a synopsis of what he feels is the better speaker. Let's take a listen. Go. So I'd love to hear your answer on it. This is from Awesomeness Caleb. He's wondering about the Salon 2 versus the F328BE. That's the million dollar question because the <laughs> Salon 2 is what? About a decade old now. Uh, uh, yeah, 12 to 13 years old now, yes. Yeah, I mean, it took this long for you guys to come up with another flagship type product in the Revel line. And the F328 is a little cheaper. It's like 16 grand a pair versus the Revel Salon 2, which is, I think, at 22 grand. Yeah, yep. So yeah, diminishing returns here? I mean, is the F328 BE 90% as good as the Salon 2, or is it better in some areas? What do you think? Well, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, we'll talk about a couple of things here because there's a, there's a lot to discuss. And I know it's been one of the, since we announced the F328BE, a lot of people are like, well, what's going on? Where's Salon 3? Where's, you know, the new Ultima series? And is this better than a Salon 2? Well, um, I, I will tell you, um, and, and I, so first of all, I have Salon 2s sitting on the opposite end of the room I'm in right now. And I have F328BEs downstairs. Yes, that is a benefit of leading the product development team. <laughs> but so I have very uh, considerable real world comparison between the two products. Uh, the F328BE is the better loudspeaker. Um, and there are a couple things that you can say there. The, the Salon 2, absolutely incredible loudspeaker. You can't deny uh, the heritage that we have from that. It was designed, you know, like I say, almost 13 years ago. It has consistently been rated among one of the best loudspeakers available at any price. Uh, the, the engineering that went into that thing is just absolutely phenomenal. One of the reasons it hasn't been replaced until now is it has been, frankly, a challenge to develop a speaker that sounds better and does things better than the Salon 2 does. Um, with the F328BE, um, we wanted to really challenge that the best that we can. And when, I, when I'm saying that it's a better loudspeaker, you have to consider, first of all, they're developed, you know, 13 years apart from each other. And what we've been able to learn and develop in the years since the salon was done is not insignificant. And uh, really, again, pressing, Mark Glazier is the, you know, principal engineer for all the Rebel loudspeakers. He developed the salon too, and he's, he's done... Uh, the development work on the 328s. Uh, and the, and the, let's even back up a second, right, to the F228, the smaller version that came out first when we launched the, the bookshelf in the middle tower before we expanded the range. F228 was ranked loudspeaker of the year by Stereophile, right? And, and so now you're coming back to go, here's a $10,000 speaker is considered one of the best speakers on the market. So we had two challenges. How do we better the F228 
how do we compare against the Salon 2? So if we start at the top, uh, the 328BE, first of all, uh, for everyone to be clear, it does not use the same tweeter or waveguide that the 228, the 226, the 126, and the center channel use, right? So it is a larger uh, sixth generation waveguide on that as opposed to the slightly smaller fifth generation that's done on uh, the 228 and smaller. You can see it at the perimeter of it and it really, um, what Mark was really working on that was kind of smooth how the waveguide itself meets the cabinet. And you can see it's, it's these are like little details of how, you, but it's, it's when you're digging down into every last uh, ounce of what you can find to make a speaker better, these are the kinds of things you look at. The tweeter itself has a much, much larger motor structure than what the, uh, uh, they're both one inch beryllium diaphragms, but it's much larger than what's in the 228. So now we've got a tweeter that has even greater output capability, um, almost impervious to power compression when you're talking about a uh, dome tweeter. But we should mention, as you and I talked before, the one thing about Revel speakers, I think there's a lot more in common with the technology and things we just discussed with JBL than maybe what a lot of people think, right? And people think, well, they've got their JBL speakers, that's their horn line, and they got their Revel speakers, that's their dome and cones. All of the Revels use waveguides with an acoustic lens in front of them. So in, in effect, we really have a compression driver, if you will, in the Revel speakers, because that acoustic lens that's there uh, is basically putting that diaphragm into a mild form of compression, not the same as, as the drivers we use in here. Maybe that's, you know, three or four to one versus a 12 to one, you know. Mm -hmm. Again, don't quote me on these, I'm not an engineer, but, but it is still a uh, form of compression that goes into it. And then with the waveguide, now we're getting that control directivity with it. And so the, that waveguide is really helping to integrate with the mid-range driver. The Revels are three ways instead of two ways. And so that's what's developed there. The mid-range driver in a 328 is the same as what's in a 228. The woofers, while there is a third one, they also have uh, some evolutionary improvements in the motor structure that uh, Mark was able to put into them. So while you could look at it and go, it's a 228 with a third woofer, it's actually, the woofers are better woofers than what's in a 228. The other thing is uh, 328 is considerably larger than what the 228 is because you can't just simply put a third woofer in a in a box and say, well, now it has more bass or plays louder. You've got to have a commensurate amount of enclosure volume to go with it, right? And so when you look at the 328, um, you'll notice that it's like six inches deeper than what a, uh, you know, four to six inches deeper, I think is what it is than a 228. And it's several inches taller uh, because of that third woofer. And you also notice that the ports got moved to the rear of the speaker. Um, and that was because of the simple stack height by the time we put everything on the front of it, that tweeter was going to be way up in the air uh, and not in a good place. So we moved the ports to the rear of the speaker on that one. They actually, from a design standpoint, that's super cool. It looks like I would call it a dual exhaust on the back of the way the port flare, because, you know, the whole back of that cabinet is rounded yeah. and how you have a, a flared port exit onto a rounded surface. Uh, there's a fun project for a mechanical engineer. Um, so that's something to, to think about there. Uh, the crossover network, again, uh, a little more advanced than what we have in here uh, with Mark. It was, you know, push the performance further than the 228. Uh, the 328 with the larger cabinet with the third driver has a much greater base extension than it does uh, in the 228. Uh, we have more output capability, plays louder. Uh, more sensitivity. Less, more sensitivity. More sensitivity. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we rated it at 91, somewhere around in there. So it's fairly hot. Revel speakers have never been known for it being efficient, but with the Beryllium series, that was a goal. And that was something, again, when you come back to the, the dynamics are one of the very compelling things about, you know, JBL loudspeakers with that technology. Revels are such neutral, such amazing sounding speakers, but without that dynamic capability, that was a little some extra ingredient we wanted to put into the soup of that, that product. And so that's what we did. So back to the awesomeness question then as we compare that, um, again, I, I think now the 328 tweeter and, and first of all, the, the Salon 2 doesn't really have a waveguide in, in much sense and there's no lens at all in front of that dome. So you got one inch beryllium comparison, but now I got an acoustic lens and a, and a six gen waveguide as opposed to a one <laughs> first gen waveguide. So there's an advantage 328, right? The drivers 
the mid-range and the woofers. We've got our uh, deep ceramic composite drivers, the DCCs that we use in those versus the titanium drivers. Less moving mass in the beryllium speaker than there is in the Ultima speaker. So again, a little bit of an advantage and another you know, 12 years of, a, of design development that Mark could get into that mid-range and those woofers. So that's there. Uh, when you look at the baffle, the 328 does have the flat baffle of the Performa uh, family, whereas you get the sculpted baffle for the salon. So I would give that advantage to the salon in that respect. So whatever cabinet diffraction may be there, I would say is probably, uh, again, definitely an advantage to the salon. The salon is a little bit taller. I think the tweeter lands at around 54 inches or so. And um, the 328, we got the tweeter down a little bit. The salon tweeter is really a bit too high when you're in a normal, you know, seated, how far away uh, listening position. So we want to drop the tweeter down. And that was another advantage by putting the ports on the back. So well, the salon has, um, another, it has a, it's a four way design, right? It has another mid. Well, they're both, yeah, so it's got a mid-range and a mid-base and then yeah. three woofers. So it does have, it's a four-way design uh, with six drivers in it as opposed to a three-way design with five drivers in it. So, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, outside of that, uh, I think the, the finish options on the uh, beryllium's are much nicer than what we have on the uh, salons. But again, that's what you get when you get something that's, you know, 12 years newer. So well, incidentally, we did give you guys the 126 BEs. We gave you product of the year award, I think last year. And yep. that's what we're doing the entire. We're going to basically have a review of every one of the of the BE products by next year because I'm getting the 328s, as you know, in the other hall, Smart House. It's going to be in our two channel room. Very excited about that. And yeah, yeah, awesome. And then we have one more super chat. Let me see if I can find it here. <laughs> Sorry, I gave you like a five minute answer on that particular question. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna break that off into a separate video and say the showdown of the Salon Two versus the F328 BE. From Harmon, from the mouth of Harmon itself. <laughs> I, the, the beauty of it is you really can't go wrong either way. They're both amazing speakers. So Yeah, they're uh, similarly good, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right, folks. So there you have it. You have Jim Garrett's um, opinion on which speaker is better. He clearly thinks the F328BE is better. I'm going to put Sean Olive on the spot. Sean Olive is their technical director, their research developer and he kind of favors the salon too. So in my private conversations with him, not so private, I'll let it out, Sean, I'm sorry, but he basically says he still has a slight edge to the salon too. So what I wanna know is if there are any Revel dealers out there, people that sell this product for a living, or if there's really cool guys that are into this product that are real fanboys of the product. I'm, I'm kind of becoming a fanboy myself. I really love the brand. If you heard both of these speakers, Tell me which one do you prefer? Do you think they're similarly good or do you think one has more advantages over the other? Personally, I, I think that this is a, a really nice looking speaker, but so is the Salon 2. The Salon 2 has the nice radius edges on the cabinet to, to minimize diffraction, but obviously that comes at a cost. This speaker retails for 16 grand a pair, the F328, whereas the Salon 2s are 22,000 a pair. So that's quite a difference in price. So anyways, guys, I hope you find this video useful. Again, give me your comments down below. Which Revel speaker is your favorite, the Salon 2 or the F328? Make sure you thumb this video up. Make sure you share it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. I will be sharing some more inner details of this product, including some measurements that I don't publish, and inside pictures of the product, that kind of stuff. That'll be on my Patreon channel. For your benefit, you can get more details if you're into that. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.